Everyone, great to be with you again today on the agenda. Man, I'm fired up about this one. I really am. Uh, the 2016 re-release of Milano Sento. Him. Uh, Milano Sento, him, is back. U.S. distribution point being Lucky Scent. This cost me 95 bucks. I bought it from Lucky Scent. It also comes in a 50 ml bottle, and that'll run you 55. Oh, man, I tell you. Oh, sometimes you get a bottle of perfume in the mail, and you just, uh, well, call me a fraghead. I just get all excited. I really do. This is, uh, this is, I think, remarkable work, and truly, um, well, we're going to get into this. Let's first of all begin. Let me kind of put the brakes on a little bit here, and tell you what it smells like, first of all. After all, that's why we're here. Um, comes in a 100 ml bottle. Uh, you've got a batch code on the bottom of the box, right there. That corresponds with the batch code there. And uh, again, there's two sizes. Uh, if you're here in the United States, Lucky Scent sells it. Uh, if you're in the UK, I believe you can buy it directly through the website. And I believe from other retail points, mainland Europe, I think the same. And there is a distribution point in Australia. So let's get into what this smells like with not too much commentary. Uh, and then the latter half of this review probably on minute four and a half, is going to be uh, some commentary on why I think this release is actually quite important, especially in 2000 and bloody 19. So it opens with a bergamot citrus accord that is very standard. Uh, and in fact, I think was really quite ingenious because the bergamot and citrus accord is nothing you haven't smelled a hundred times before. So um, any of the openings of any citrus fragrance uh, in the niche marketplace. Pick on Aqua de Parma, pick on Atelier Cologne, what have you. Uh, Bergamot Soleil, Atelier Cologne. Take that Bergamot opening, oh, and fuzzy it up a skosh, and you've got yourself the opening to this fragrance. You then follow it up with a lavender note that uh, is not trying too hard. No one here is trying to be the groundbreaking lavender fragrance of the year, which again, is delightful, as in this opening is incredibly unchallenging, calming, um, and falls into this sort of like dumb reach scent category. Uh, there's nothing groundbreaking about this opening. There's nothing uh, shocking about this opening. This isn't going to win sort of, uh, you know, um, Indie Perfume House of the Year Award opening. Once that lavender begins to mellow, and make no mistake, there are three parts to this fragrance, which in today's marketplace for 95 USD is basically impossible to find, but you have a defined top, a clear mid, and a clear base. The mid on this, you begin to get, um, <laughs> the beginnings of a patchouli accord mixed with cinnamon. And I adore cinnamon. This isn't a gourmand cinnamon, though. For all you gourmand freaks, put the brakes on. This is not a sickly sweet, um, sort of by Killian-esque, perfumes de Marly vibey, gourmand, cinnamon sugary vibe. No, no. This is more like, wait a minute, I keep coming back to my arm to catch this cinnamon vibe because you can't quite place it. Because it's intermingled beautifully, I think, with the beginning of patchouli. And then that sort of does its thing, and you're kind of getting, if you've been in this hobby for a while, you're sort of getting vibes of Fougere Royale, but wait a minute, is that Reeve Gauche I'm detecting? Yeah, the old bottle, the old aluminum bottle. Wait a minute, is that Invasion Bar Bar? No, I'm not a big Invasion Bar Bar fan. If you like Invasion Bar Bar, this is right up your alley. I, it's not my cup of tea, but that's another story. But you get the point. Masculine barbershop-esque the top and the mid are extremely easy to digest. Extremely easy to digest. Um, even if you have a perfume collection, quote unquote, uh, where a 200 ml bottle of Dior Sauvage EDT is your main uh, power player, this is going to be approachable. This is not some, you know, oh God, am I gonna spend $300 and regret it two months from now purchase. No, no, no. This is, this is up till this point extremely approachable. These accords are done beautifully. The blending uh, the blending is really quite good. I, I would love to know, well, I'd love to know a lot of things in life, but I, whoever the perfumer is, whatever lab, whatever 
source material they're using um, is quite good quality. The base of this, though, is where the bat gets firmly placed on the ball, and the ball is hit square into right field, and the right fielder is asleep. The base of this is the base of this is right out of my God. I really feel odd saying this, and I do this. I really thought about how to say this, but the base of this really reminds me of Koros, older Koros. Now, not not those hallowed, really old school bottles of Koros where you know. You put two sprays of that on, and I mean, it turns into the magical freaking mystery tour. No, this is the base of this reminds me of the base of Koros from God, like 90, 95 to 99 ish. <laughs> this is that's your that's your scent profile. And we've gone way past minute four, but I, you know, I can't help myself. I, I adore this stuff. A um, couple more details about the bottle. Number one, don't pick it up at a cap. The cap is flimsy and cheap. Uh, the atomizer is, is decent. Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, and the bottle uh, is a lovely, uh, heavy, old school, simplistic bottle, which I frankly adore. As it's not flashy, it's uh, all business. Why I'm so excited about this is as follows. This reminds me, well, it reminds me of, uh, it reminds me of why I love this hobby. 